start off by congratulating our friends in Spain and Argentina. And I don't say that easily, especially for the Spanish bit. But anyway, all, uh, sometimes we have to say things. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, good afternoon. Um, very shortly, I will be joined here by our special advisor on Africa, Christina Duarte, along with the executive secretary of the UN Economic, and, uh, Economic Commission for Africa, Clever Gatete. Uh, they will be here to discuss the ministerial meeting on Africa Day at the high-level political forum that is taking place uh, today, the HPLF. Uh, which is ongoing today, uh, which is ongoing today. Uh, tomorrow, I will be joined by Alvaro Lario, the president of IFAD, which, as you all know, is the International Fund for Agricultural Development, and he is also the chair of UN Water. And he will also be joined by Federico Properzi, the chief and technical lead of UN Water. They will be here to launch the first ever UN system-wide strategy for water and sanitation, and unveil the latest figures from the upcoming State of Food Security and Nutrition 2024 uh, report. Our Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed will travel to West Africa as part of a wider effort to engage at a country level to support the acceleration and implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. And this follows the SDG Summit that took place in September. She leaves tonight. Her first stop will be in Dakar in Senegal. From there, she will travel to Guinea and Mali. From Mali, the Deputy Secretary General will then head to Ethiopia to preside over the, the opening of the first session of the Preparatory Committee for the Fourth International Conference on Financing for Development. From Ethiopia, the Deputy Secretary General will return to West Africa to continue the second leg of her mission. She will start in Burkina Faso and continue on to Niger before concluding her mission in Nigeria. During the visit, the Sec Deputy Secretary General will hold meetings with senior government officials, UN entities on the ground, and other stakeholders to take stock of the challenges affecting the realization of the Sustainable Development Goals, the review of the UN's presence, and support to the SDGs in these varied environments, and identify ways to strengthen impact for people on the ground. Uh, turning to the situation in Gaza, I think you all heard a rather extensive briefing from our friend Scott Anderson, uh, the head of uh, UNRWA in Gaza. I can further tell you that we and our humanitarian partners continue to assist families who are being displaced from northern Gaza to areas in the south. A team from the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs carried out a mission today aimed at supporting the scaling up of services at points where families flee uh, northern Gaza or fleeing northern Gaza or arriving in the south. Furthermore, our humanitarian partners are registering displaced people so that support can be provided to them whenever they seek shelter south of Wadi Gaza. We're also planning to, uh, missions to areas south of Saladin Road to assess other people's need in that area. OCHA says that with each new evacuation uh, directive, families in Gaza are being forced to make impossible choices, stay amid, active host stay amid active hostilities, or flee to areas with little space or services, and of course, no guarantee of safety, as we saw this weekend. OCHA also says the horrors witnessed in recent days only underscore what we have said repeatedly over the past nine months. There is no safe place in Gaza, not shelters, not hospitals, and not the so-called humanitarian zones. We call yet again on all parties to this conflict to respect their obligations under international humanitarian law. They must take constant care to spare civilians and civilian objects. This includes ensuring safe passage for those who flee, and wherever they are in Gaza, civilians must receive the essential they need to survive, food, shelter, and health care. Making sure civilians in Gaza get, get the life-saving support they need means ensuring safe and unimpeded humanitarian operations. Turning to Hurricane Beryl, uh, the, uh, we have an update um, from our colleagues in Grenada, St. Vincent's and the Grenadines in Jamaica. Two weeks since the hurricane's first impact, our teams in the three islands continue to work with authorities to complete needs assessments. 
<coughs> in Jamaica, the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, the World Food Program, and the UN Disaster Assessment and Coordination Arm are assessing the damage to homes, which is that uh, assessment is expected to wrap up shortly. In Grenada and St. Vincent's and the Grenadines, humanitarian teams have identified restoring uh, water supplies and the provision of sanitation services as top priorities. We and our partners will continue to support these countries through the recently launched response plan, which seeks $9 million in funding and aims to help 43,000 out of the 82,000 people potentially impacted by this storm. Turning to Ukraine, our humanitarian colleagues on the ground are telling us that attacks today and over the weekend continue to impact civilians in frontline areas. Authorities said that on Saturday, an attack on a railway in the Kharkiv region of eastern Ukraine caused nearly 30 civilian casualties, including children. A second attack reportedly killed two first responders who had rushed to help. Local authorities and humanitarian partners on the ground say the strikes are damaged, also damaged scores of civilian buildings as well as railway infrastructure. Heavy fighting also continued in the Donetsk region. In the town of Mirnohrad, multiple strikes killed and injured civilians, including a child, and caused damage to civilian infrastructures. Aid workers mobilized, are mobilized to assist people impacted by these attacks. And <clears throat> turning to the Central African Republic, our peacekeeping colleagues there report that a joint delegation from the UN and government officials, that includes on the UN and it includes uh, our representative on the ground, Valentin Rugwabiza. Uh, they visited Obo and uh, Bambuti on Saturday. They were there to assess the efforts undertaken to help restore a semblance of normal life in the Ombumbu prefecture following an escalation of violence between armed groups that have been taking place there since February. The visit came two months after the deployment of UN peacekeepers to Bambuti a town in the far east of the Central African Republic on the border with South Sudan, an isolated area where national defense and security forces are absent. The deployment of the UN force carried out in parallel with the ongoing rehabilitation of the Bambuti Obobangasu Road done by peacekeepers is progressively opening up the area. The majority of localities in that prefecture are now accessible, allowing for the free movement of goods and people. During the visit, a road was inaugurated, war work was launched to drill boreholes to help supply the area with drinking water, and the foundation uh, stone for the town hall was laid to enable the mayor to resume her activities in the area after a two-year absence, marking the return of state authority. Total, uh, in total, the UN mission with the participation of our country team has launched 13 projects which have been identified to rapidly address the basic humanitarian needs of local families, to reestablish the presence of state authority, and to reconnect with the rest of the country. A couple of personnel announcements. I uh, just want to read into the record <coughs> uh, what we announced earlier today, which is uh, we have a new special representative of the Secretary General for Iraq. Um, Mohammed Al Hassan of the Sultanate of Oman was appointed as the Secretary General's new Special Representative for Iraq and head of the UN Assistance Mission there. He succeeds uh, uh, Janine Hennis Plaschert of the Netherlands, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for her services. And as you know, she is now our Special Coordinator in Lebanon. Uh, Mr. Al Hassan brings to the position a broad range of diplomatic experiences with careers spanning over 30 years working on preventive diplomacy, peace building, and development. And you all know him from his, uh, well, recently current post as the uh, permanent representative of Oman to the United Nations. We also have a new special uh, resident coordinator in Guinea-Bissau. Uh, Secretary General has appointed Geneviève Boutin of Canada as the RC in Guinea-Bissau. She starts work today following the approval from the government. She brings more than 20 years of experience in development and humanitarian work and peace building and child rights work. She previously served as deputy director in UNICEF's program group and other leadership positions at UNICEF. She's worked in OCHA and other places, and we congratulate her. Um, and today's World Youth Skills Day. In the message, the Secretary General uh, said this day shines a spotlight on skills for peace and sustainable development, adding that young people around the world can make a bigger difference for our shared futures, such as green and digital economies, education, 
and so much more. And perhaps this is more. Thank you, sir. Okay, that's it. Your turn, Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, first, um, does the Secretary General have any comment on the latest um, Israeli airstrikes in Gaza? Well, I mean, you know, I, f I feel we're repeating ourselves uh, at our call to halt the conflict. Uh, at our condemnations of civilians uh, being hit. Uh, we would like to see the ongoing discussions on the ceasefire uh, bear fruit as quickly as possible. And does the Secretary General have any comment on the Houthis' apparent latest uh, attack on a ship? Uh, again, uh, I think we've clearly condemned uh, these attacks on uh, uh, on civilian targets in uh, in the Red Sea and uh, and in the broader in the broader area, which has an impact not only, of course, on those ships uh, being targeted, but on the global economy as a whole. And lastly, um, you made an announcement of a new SRSG for Iraq. Are we going to get? an announcement soon about a replacement for Martin Griffiths. It depends if you uh, use the UN definition of soon or the Oxford English Dictionary edition uh, meaning of soon. Uh, if to some. Uh, thank you. Uh, just a quick follow-up on Edith's uh, question. Um, I, I, I mean, do, do you condemn the killing of civ Palestinian civilians by Israel in Gaza? Yes, and we have so since the beginning. But, but why is it that your statement doesn't um, say that clearly compared to your statement a week ago or something uh, when it came to uh, Ukraine? I, I, I think we, I mean, listen, you can, uh, you can argue that we have not been clear. I feel for our, our point, we have been clear as, uh, as possible. Uh, when speaking about the situation there? I have another question. Um, I just would like to clarify something because um, t I, I was a little confused after the uh, briefing today in the morning. Uh, j so the UN stopped its, uh, opposed its operation um, regarding the American peer after June 8th, uh, Israeli um, rescue uh, operation for four hostages that killed also 270 uh, Palestinians. Um, and if I am correct, remember, you have also some investigation going on there regarding uh, that issue. Um, can you clarify that? Because today, um, yeah. Yeah, my understanding is that there is an investigation going on. I'll try to get you a bit more detail. Deji, happy Monday. Happy Monday. First, I have a personal thing to ask. Uh -oh. uh, I received this letter from UNRWA USA. said your donations to Gaza are under attack. Uh, basically, it's, it, it tells the lawsuits we mentioned a couple of weeks ago. And they are asking for, a, for, for the donation for the USA's legal fund. So I'm just curious. Uh, can you clarify whether uh, ANWA would allocate some of the donations to this, what they call legal fund, to fight the, the legal I think, case? Uh, I think that question should be asked of ANWA USA, uh, which is independent from the Secretariat. So I can't, I can't speak to what they're sending you. Okay. Um, so, but, but basically, uh, they ask for donation for this legal fund, which means the money we donated before, that would I, go I, to As I said, I, I think you need to ask them the, that question. Okay. Um, second, I know, uh, you know, this question will go to, to this briefing uh, about the Trump assassination attempt. I'm not going to ask that because we know that Secretary General has already put out the statement. Uh, for the past few years, we saw Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, Prime Minister Robert Fito, and now former President Donald Trump. How, how does the Secretary General so seen this kind of political violence on the rising for the past few years? I think what it shows is that very few countries are immune to political violence. And I think what we have seen in recent years 
uh, is not only the more visible attacks that you, you, you've mentioned, whether the one on, on former President Trump uh, uh, or, or the others that we, we, have, uh, we have seen. But I think all of you are pretty plugged into what is being said on social media. We've seen a rise in rhetorical violence, verbal violence, and in many countries you see legislators and local uh, elected officials also reporting a level of personal threat and, and personal violence, which is extremely worrying for any democracy or, frankly, for any country. And uh, one last question also concerning this, um, the news. New York Post, in the beginning of their coverage, they posted, said, the shooter identified as a Chinese man, actually, which is wrong. Uh, they posted that online for a couple of hours. Um, it's it, it's, it might be an error, but how do you think this could also, like before the, the, cla the, cla the more clear version of this report came out, how would this impact, you know, different Look, peoples? I think, <clears throat> I was a journalist many years ago, thankfully not in the day and age of Twitter and social media. And I think journalists have a responsibility on breaking news to ensure that the reporting is fact-based. And we also saw, uh, I think over the last uh, 48 hours, a huge amount also of, of disinformation uh, in which social media companies, as in any case of disinformation, have a responsibility. Okay, uh, any questions online? I will go get our guests then. Thank you very much, stay put, don't move.